San Diego WSRadio.com presents the UT Community Spotlight Show with your host, Drew Schlossberg. I'm Drew Schlossberg of UT San Diego. We have back in the studio one of our favorite uh, guests, a spectacular organization that is Bethel Nathan. She's the secretary of the board of the San Diego Women's Foundation and has been involved. How long, how many years now have you been involved with the organization? I've been a member for 11, actually, and on the board for, I think, nine of those. Oh, my goodness. Just nine of them? Very Just great. Nine. And, of course, uh, anybody who's heard Bethel on our Community Spotlight show before knows her enthusiasm just resonates right through the uh, Internet, I'm talking about all the great things that the organization does. And you were saying before we got started that finally, we have good timing for having you on. We do. Yeah, tell us why. Well, we're at a really cool point in the year because six weeks ago we announced and gave out our money for the grants that are being used this year. So that was four organizations, $172,000 in the area of it was actually community leadership development, so helping to identify and develop leaders in the underserved communities. So they're using our dollars starting this month, actually. Right. And two weeks ago, we announced our guidelines for next year's grants. So oftentimes when we come and chat, I feel guilty that, sorry, we, the window's closed for applying and learning, and, and it's actually that window's open right now. And it's open till when? It is open. So what we're doing is that so we just announced our guidelines. It right. is in the area of employment readiness. So it is meant for organizations that are getting people ready for employment. It's specifically programs that provide career-specific education, training, or work experiences that increase access to San Diego's labor market and the prospect of long-term financial self-sufficiency. See, and what usually happens in this show, and it's complete luck, to be honest with you, because if, uh, if it was a skill set I have, uh, you'd be foolish. Uh, we have Peter Kallstrom right on before you. You talk about into that target. Uh, Peter is the president and CEO of Workforce Partnership, for those who uh, heard his uh, session uh, a little bit ago today. And we always seem to have people that are coming on that have so much connectivity to some other guests on here. So that sounds good. And that is so. Is, is there anything more important than getting people engaged in the workforce, getting them job, getting them uh, viable jobs, vibrant jobs, and so forth? that will continue to make San Diego the great place it is. I completely agree. And and when you talk about the connectivity, that actually, I mean, it feels really good because we say we love being catalysts for change. We invest in innovative solutions, and we want to focus on what the priorities of the community are. Right. It's not for us to say where the money should be used. And so knowing that this is what the community is asking for and talking about and that we have the ability to invest in programs next year for that, it feels great. Yeah. Well, and again, uh, that one of the points that uh, Peter was uh, making also is that as they look at what are the new sectors, what are the sectors, uh, they switch and they Definitely. change. And you certainly can't think, ah, we're still doing uh, aerospace. Well, listen, aerospace has a role, but it's not like it was in the 60s and 70s, so to speak. So talk about, um, you know, the newest grant focus. So, so the newest grant focus. So so one of the keys, first of all, if anybody wants to see the guidelines, yes. sdwomensfoundation.org, okay, right. because all the details are there. And so next week is the Grant Seekers Forum, and that's why I was really excited the timing worked, because right. next week is when people have the opportunity on the 29th to come and meet with us to hear about what what the topic really is about, what we're looking for, our specific guidelines, have the chance to ask their questions to see if their organization will qualify, and then have the opportunity to apply, which is due for the end of August. Right. And again, that will be at your place at the foundation? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, right. So that is, but it's on the website. It's on the website. Right. Yep, it is at the San Diego Foundation offices in Point Loma. Right, exactly. On and, the 29th. Good. And from when to when? The 29th from 3 till 4.30 p.m. Okay, very good. And you usually get a pretty good... Pretty we good get a great turnout, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, because people are very, very curious. It, it it allows an open forum to really ask questions. And and because we get relatively specific with our guidelines. And and our, our granting, as, as I think you know, is really about significant granting. It's about grants that are $25,000 or greater. So it's funding a specific program and not just giving money to an organization. And there's a difference with that. Right. And again, for those who have heard the San Diego Women's Foundation on our show multiple times over here, just a little bit of a reminder, you know, they really educate and inspire women to engage in collective philanthropy. How many uh, members do you have now? We have about 210, 215 very interesting women from all over the county, all, all ages, all sorts of backgrounds and careers, and really cool women. 
Well, and, and the key to this, and we've talked about this many, many times, they each contribute about uh, $2,000, uh, give or take, um, each year. And, of course, so now it's not like the group is trying to fundraise, so to speak. Exactly. Um, but what they are doing uh, is they got this uh, you know, pot of money, and they will go ahead and make sure that their things are going to be funded not at $500, okay, as you mentioned, 25000 and you know, in between somewhere, depending on what the need is and so forth. And now what you folks have done such a wonderful – how many years you guys have been in business? Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Just gave out the 15th set of grants. Is that right? $2.9 million granted to 75 organizations, 75 programs right. over 15 years. Right. That feels awesome. i got to tell you that. Well, I think it, you know, it is for many different reasons, but you folks take it so seriously, as you should, uh, and you're very serious about taking it seriously, <laughs> that you're going to do as much learning yourselves um, in these different areas. And, uh, you know, the, and of course, all of the 210 to 11 folks vote on this, do, you, yes, do they not? Yes, absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. It's not like the executive committee says, we're doing this, and uh, whether you like it or no, not. No, no, not at all. Not at right. all, actually. And uh, the, the more members involved in the whole process, the better. We also have a no-guilt policy. So if, if all you want to do is write your check for two thousand dollars or or a thousand for under forty, right. and then just vote on the ballot at the end of the year, that's totally fine. But a lot of our members <laughs> really enjoy rolling their sleeves up and getting involved in whether it's the grants process, right. doing proposal review, site visiting these great organizations that have applied. You know, I like the no guilt policy. I'm going to have to bring that into some of the other boards I'm on. <laughs> We're chatting with Bethel Nathan, she's secretary of the board of the San Diego Women's uh, Foundation. Uh, that has uh, over the years have distributed how many million? $2.9 million wow. to 75 programs, all within San Diego County. Yeah, and what's also so smart about what this very, very bright women's group has done is they save some of the money for an endowment. Yeah, we have and, over $3.2-ish million dollars in endowment right now. That's fantastic. And that means that we're here to stay. That's right. That's 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 for the long term, and and I think in the in the last recession problem, you saw a lot of nonprofit organizations sure. that did not have endowments right. really suffer, if not disappear. And those of us who had been forethinking and created the endowment made a difference because you had that. Right. Do you have a ceiling how high you'll go on the endowment? No. Um, I believe that, that once it gets to a point, our goal is for it to be self-sustaining. Right. And so, therefore, after we hit, whatever I think million. we figured whatever it was, between 7 and $10 million, something right. along those lines, right. for the endowment, at that point, it will be giving us enough in the spinoff to fund all the operations of the organization, and that is our goal. And, therefore, we'll then be able to be granting even more of our membership dollars. Right. In the meantime, it is split. Right, exactly. Well, uh, you'll get there sooner than later in, in that aspect. So talk a little about, and we're going to go back to the guidelines uh, when we come back to the second half of the uh, the show here, but talk about some of the newly awarded uh, organizations. Definitely. So it, it was a really interesting topic because it was about leadership development, and, and it was interesting to see who, who applied, and it was about both identifying and developing leaders within communities and where they would then go back into their own community afterward to help make a difference locally. Locally. And so, you know, leadership skills are, are a wide variety of things. And it's everything from presentation skills and learning advocacy and understanding what the issues are and being able to help. It's gathering people together. There's so many intangibles, but yet they're all extremely important. So we're proud to support four organizations using our dollars now. Um, and it's, like I said, it's $172,000 for organizations. And the four this year who are using it right now, we have South Bay Community services we have outdoor outreach we have the center on policy initiatives and we have the jacob center for neighborhood innovation for great organizations well and again you know leadership is a world uh, word that's tossed around quite a bit um and you know some people who think they're leaders um about as far from leaders as can be it's so funny because uh, i think a lot of the people that uh, i think they know they have leadership qualities but they don't focus on it are the best leaders of them all because they look at the end result working with in, in collaboration right. and so that's what's important to them not having their name in the top of the, right. all the whole thing uh and you know everything that goes along with that trust communications values doing your homework and and so forth is critical but having worked with a major company for many many years and then a major organization before that um there is so much truth the leadership is at the top and you know, especially with big companies mm-hmm. and with small companies too for that matter but especially big ones because it, it is so true and i've seen this personally at the union tribune those leaders that really 
do lead. Um, people are watching, mm-hmm. and you can tell, you know, when uh, the, you know that stuff is happening, and you can see a certainly a change. So that, that is that is terrific. Those are four great organizations that have just you know, got this grant. When is the What's voting? Also- Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. What's also neat is that a lot of the leaders right. often are not necessarily, like you said, they're not the visible ones. No. It's that the programs that we funded right now, actually, three out of the four is student leadership, helping to build this next young generation to make a difference. And one is about parent leadership and helping to be leaders in their schools right. and making a difference. So it's not always the big visible names and faces at all that actually become the leaders making a difference in the community. Right. Uh, however, you do need the person who's running the whole show to totally. give the support to those folks to take that and get their ego out of it and totally. give them uh, the support. And that's all about leadership, too, is that, listen, maybe not the way I would have done it, but if you're going to be successful, knock yourself out, and that's uh, you know uh, good for you. We, we come back, uh, Bethel, let's talk a little bit about, again, uh, the new guidelines for you know uh, the next grants and, and talk about the size. I know one of the more popular parts of the time when you come in, you talk about here's how the cycle works. And actually, we hit the cycle at a good time for uh, for once, this aspect of it. And then how can our uh, listeners uh, get engaged in it? Yes, this is a women's organization, um, but you do have a little auxiliary because I'm a part of it. You know, <laughs> exactly. You have the, opportunity for cool men. Exactly. Well, I'm a cool man. I don't know. But I was the first one to join. You were. Yeah, exactly. And I hope to continue uh, doing that. We're going to be right back with Bethel. Nathan, she is the secretary of the board for the San Diego Women's Foundation. I'm Drew Schlossberg of UT. San Diego, and you've been listening to the Community Spotlight Show on UT San Diego WS Radio. We are San Diego's online radio. Thank you. By listening, you help prove that content marketing works. You need to engage your customers. We provide the solution. Contact Wade at WSRadio.com or call 866-WS-RADIO. Hey, do you want a great price on a new or used car? Hi, this is professional racing driver Don Swanson, and I know a thing or two about cars. I'm talking about Military Auto Center, San Diego's original and only automotive warehouse, where low overhead means low prices on your next vehicle. Stop by and experience a friendly and casual way to discuss your car needs. They're located conveniently at 9323 Activity Road. You can call them at 858-831-7887 or online at militaryautocenter.com. We'll see you there. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the Coaches Training Program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. This is Bill Gruber with BizVid Communications, a Southern California video production leader. We've been honored to sponsor, produce, write, and host many of the fine programs on WS Radio over the years. So we understand how important the Internet and your website exposure are. As video producers, we know the tricks and secrets to incorporate video to increase your search engine optimization and business success. Visit bizvidcommunications.com to see what we can do for you. B-I-Z-V-I-D communications.com. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. In the military, things can change in an instant. Your personal life is just the same. 
just like you protect our country, you want your family protected. That's why thousands of military members trust Navy Mutual Life Insurance. Navy Mutual is nonprofit, providing current and former Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard families with life insurance, no sales fees, and no military service restrictions. Protecting members on active duty and beyond. Call 1-800-628-6011. 800-628-6011. NavyMutual.org. Insuring those who serve. Talk to me. UT San Diego WSRadio.com presents the UT Community Spotlight Show with your host, Drew Schlossberg. I'm Drew Schlossberg of UT San Diego. We are back with Bethel Nathan. She's the Secretary of the Board for the San Diego Women's Foundation. Just talking about some of the new guidelines for the next granting uh, process coming down there and the newly awarded local organizations that uh, got, what, $172,000 worth of grants? Absolutely. Right, for leadership. And they were uh, South Bay Community Services Outdoor Outreach Center on Policy Initiatives and the Jacob Center for Neighborhood Intervention, obviously for um, top shelf stellar organizations in this uh, region. And uh, you got the benefit of having to work with all these cool groups that are doing great uh, things. Um, you know, we've talked about in past shows, of course, how many different categories, I should say, or areas do you focus on? You got leadership. It actually changes every year. Okay. It, it used to be when we formed 15 years ago, right. we initially established six different topic areas. After the first six cycle, we dropped it to four. And then after those, when we reevaluated, we said, you know what? We want to have the ability to be a little bit more responsive. And whatever the community is saying the priorities are for that year, it shouldn't right. necessarily have to fall into what our calendar is saying the topic is. So we change it around every year now. And so it's it's all still about funding innovative solutions for whatever the community priorities are for that year. So it changes. So last year it was water. Right. It was quality and conservation of water. Right. Then it was leadership development. This next year, now it's employment readiness. So it's really whatever the community is saying that they need and that our approximately one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 would make an impact in. Not every topic can you make a big impact with that right. kind of money. Right. So uh, have you had water before you did it uh, last year? No. Okay. Water was not, we have done environmental topics, right? But not water, but not water specifically. specifically. And is the one moving forward with employment? Is that a first one? We actually did an, a different sort of employment. Right. It was employment and economic development. That was one of our major topics. Right. So we had done that before. Right. But it it'll be a little bit different of a spin. Right. But definitely, because that is clearly something that the community constantly needs. Well, I was gonna, my my point is is that would you ever do two in a row, or would you take a break? It's definitely possible. We've talked about that. It is definitely something that the way the way that it, that, that it works with us is that we have an organization, and they change the name of what that community, what, what the committee is, right. but basically DIG, Discovery and Investigation right. Group, <laughs> and they dig deeply into what the communities right. are saying the priorities are. Right. They come up with their narrowed down four or five areas. Then they email all of our members. So all of our members get the opportunity to help narrow it down further. So they say, hey, here's what we're hearing from the community. Here's four or five things, one of which this past year was, do we want to do leadership development a second year? And it's not in our bylaws that we can't. So is this something our members would want? And when they looked at all the different options of what they were hearing, the members overwhelmingly wanted the employment readiness to be for next year's topic. And so the the members help to narrow it. Then it goes back to that group, and they then create specific guidelines around that. Right. So how does the cycle work? So uh, you've got employment readiness right now, right? Right. Is that the right term? Yep. Okay. Yep. So when did you guys decide on that? So we decided on that. Ooh, no, that's a big test. We probably <laughs> actually officially, the board probably approved that a few months ago. Okay. But our members probably voted on it early in the year. Okay. So the members wanted it in, I'm making this up in February right. or whatever the case may right. be. It they goes, went back to them. They developed more serious guidelines, and right. that came to the board to approve to right. say we're going forward. So, All right. So then it's approved in March, April, whatever the case may be. And released to the community on July 6th. On July 6th. Okay. But um, while it's – okay, so you keep it close to the vest on – okay, that's what I was well, going to get Well, because essentially at. they're narrowing. They're writing more specific guidelines. Sure. So that okay. way – when we go out to the community, they can really know if they qualify for the program or not and right. what this is. And we then have to have evaluation forms to score that kind of thing, to be able to score. So 
so the way it works, we it, it's a very vigorous right. process, which <laughs> exactly. which takes a lot of work, but we're extremely proud of it because it ends up with fantastic organizations very fully vetted. Right. So we start with a letter of inquiry process, and so that those will be due at the end of August. And so after next week's grant. Seekers Forum, which is next week on July 29th from 3 to 4.30, they'll really have the guidelines and have a chance to ask their questions. They then apply. That's due the end of August. That then comes to all of us, and there's a small committee of people who read the LOIs. We all get trained. None of us are expected to know how to do this, so we get trained based on the guidelines, how to score letters of inquiry. We each do that. We come back. We argue it out. We score them all out, and we decide who is now going to be asked to do a full proposal. And so then it goes back to them. Full proposals are due in mid-December. That comes back to another grants subcommittee that wants to review the proposals. Again, we get trained how to do that. We go through all of them and score them, come back together, argue it out. And again, you have passionate women who uh, who all see things in an interesting way. And so we argue that out. All those scores are taken into account. We decide which organizations we're going to site visit. Site visits all happen in March. And again, that could be 16 to 22 organizations that we site visit, all depending on the topic and, and how many made it past that point. And then we get back together and argue it out again at another at another meeting. And that's when we decide how many go on to the ballot. The ballot, depending on how much money we have that year, depending on how much each of the grants have asked for, since our grants are always $25,000 and greater, right. they might be 25, might be 40, they might be 60. So depending on the size of the pool and how much they're asking for, we might put seven or eight organizations on the ballot, again, based on scores from our members at that meeting. And then at that point, that goes to all of our members. So whether they were involved in the grants process or not, every single one of our members gets the same final vote of who gets the money. Right. We were chatting with Bethel Nathan. She is the secretary of the board for the San Diego Women's Foundation, talking about the process for selecting uh, these wonderful uh, nonprofits. They have to be 501c3s, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that, as you guys are, of yeah. course, uh, in that aspect of it. But, you know, again, I think what's so interesting, and I, you know, from the time we first had Tracy Johnson on the show, uh, it seems like decades ago, um, but it couldn't have been decades ago. Well, I guess it well, could have been. been. She's been with the organization almost nine years now, so it's getting it's been nine years. Ah, yeah. Okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. It just, you know, the the, the process is the organizations are going to feel good. Uh, I'm sure the ones who didn't quite get the grants might be a little disappointed, but at least they made it to the final round. Do you, we've got about two minutes to go, do you go back and see how the organizations have been doing with the money you've granted? Very much so. We actually have serious reporting requirements from the people who are have used it in that year, and then we also follow up later to see what the ripples and the ramifications are. We're not an organization that just hands them a check and says good luck and goodbye, actually. Right. We consider them community partners. Right. We are investing in the community through these organizations, and so we keep in touch. We're part of them. They're invited back every single year. We've actually helped to facilitate connections between some of our past grantees who then do programs together going forward because they all know they've been through this vetting process by us. Right. You know, it's about collective philanthropy initially with us pooling our dollars, our time, talent, and treasure to make a difference locally. But we also get the benefit of connecting really great organizations that we have, have seen the work they're doing to help each other out. Now, is collective philanthropy, we've got about 45 seconds left, is that growing? Is it, um, certainly you guys do it very yes. well. It is definitely growing. And I think because people realize they could make a greater impact together than any of us could ever do alone. Right. We are all philanthropists. It right. doesn't mean you have to give enough money to be on a building. Right. We all are philanthropists. Yeah. And if we do it together, we can make a huge difference. Yeah, right. And I loved uh, your statement earlier. Uh, uh, what is that? The no guilt syndrome? Yep. No guilt policy? No guilt policy. And, uh, which I think is good. You know, listen, a lot of us want to get involved in some of these. And, you know, I sit on six boards and lucky to do so. And, um, but there's just some times where, Listen, if you sit in anymore, you're being ineffective, you know, or not as effective as you want to do. So um, I'm going to sit there and see if I can implement the no guilt policy on some <laughs> of the ones that, that I'm on. Uh, at least they know their money's going to be used well. 
It's well, going to be steward well, yeah. even if they can't have their hands on. Well, listen, you know, it could be this is the year that I got to take a step back. I want to be, here's my money, um, and I'll vote at the end. If I decide I have a little more time, that's fine, but I'm not going to worry about it. But next year I'll be able exactly. to engage, whatever the case may be. Always great to see your smiling face, uh, Bethel Nathan, and congratulations to you and all the wonderful folks that make this uh, Women's Foundation you know, such a top-shelf organization. Thanks for having us. We always appreciate the support. Uh, we'll look forward and to having thanks you. for being our very first friend, our male friend. I am absolutely honored to have that role. We're going to sit there and say goodbye for this uh, edition of the UT Community Spotlight Show. You've been listening to UT San Diego, WS Radio. We are San Diego's online radio. military, things can change in an instant. The Navy Mutual Aid Association, we understand because it's our life too. That's why our dedication to serving the life insurance needs of our military veterans and their families is unrivaled. Navy Mutual offers superior life insurance protection without military service restrictions and limitations. A single focus on providing the peace of mind military families are looking for. That's what we do. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Call 800-628-6011 or go to NavyMutual.org. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the Coaches Training Program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. Hey guys, CS Keys here to introduce you to San Diego's number one health meal prep provider, Fresh and Fit Meals. With over 40 menu items to choose from, several pickup locations all over America's finest city, made and delivered fresh, never frozen. Save on time and money. Super convenient and improves the quality of your life. Just visit the website, freshandfitmeals.com, for all the menus and the pricing. Or give them a call at 858-805-5949 for more details. Remember, you are what you eat, so you might as well be fresh and fit with Fresh and Fit Meals. Which sandwich is healthy and tasty? Which sandwich can come on bread or in a bowl? Which sandwich comes 51 different ways so it's always your way? A which which sandwich? Stop into our shop in Hazard Center. We're upstairs from the Hazard Center Digiplex. Bring in your movie ticket. We will add a free drink and chips to your sandwich order. Or order online at whichwhich.com and we will have it ready and waiting. W-H-I-C-H-W-I-C-H. Whichwhich.com. You take your smartphone almost everywhere you go. Now WSRadio.com can be there, too. Search WS Radio in the Play Store for your Android devices or iTunes for Apple and download the WS Radio application. WSRadio.com, on your phone and in your ear everywhere you go. Download the WS Radio application. Do it now. It's very easy. WSRadio.com.